Welcome into another edition of the Crimson Corner. I am your host, Michelle Bodkin, your Utah Utes insider for KSLSports.com. And Utah's on a bye week this week, which means it feels like a really great time to bring someone in to kind of talk about some of the NFL prospects that are maybe on this Utah team and just kind of how the NFL views, I think, the University of Utah at this point in time in the season. So I have none other than the executive director of the Senior Bowl, Jim Nagy, on to talk some Utah Utes. How are you, Jim? Um, Good, Michelle. Thanks for having me on. Well, thank you for taking some time. I know you're incredibly busy uh, scouting across the country, not just regionally or even a specific school. So, uh, you know, just to get started, what do you feel like your general thoughts are on this Utah football team and and some of the guys that maybe could be prospects coming up? Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those programs, you know, you're going to have players every year. Coach Witt does an awesome job with those guys. You kind of know what, you know, what kind of player you're going to get. And that's just going back to my time, Uh, you know, in the NFL, you know, you just kind of, there's certain programs you kind of know the type of uh, player you're getting from there and and, uh, what he's been able to do at Utah. I mean, they crank out tough guys. Football's important to those guys. Um, you know, really competitive, you know, physical. So uh, I think this year's, this year's group is uh, falls right in line with, with years past. You've been high on several guys for a couple of years, actually, and, and they've been underclassmen. They're kind of now finally to that point that uh, they potentially could get a senior bowl invite. They potentially could go to the NFL. Uh, you know, let's start with Clark Phillips. What, what do you see in a guy like Clark Phillips? Well, I see a playmaker, but he's uh, he's not senior bowl eligible. So as you said, we're busy scouting the whole country. Uh, haven't had a lot, a lot of time to like dive in and study Clark, but he is one of those guys that uh, when you're watching other players, when you're watching opponent tape in, in your, or where you're watching Utah's defense for the other guys, he pops out. So usually those guys, when you're not looking for them and you still see them, um, they're usually the high-end talent guys. So what he's been able to do, I think he had a three pick game a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, just from a overall like big picture at the cornerback position. Uh, you're looking for guys that can can turn the ball over and, and be game changers. And he's obviously been that for Utah this year. Now, you've been really high on Utah's tight end duo. Unfortunately, Brent Keithy out for the season, potentially could come back to Utah again next year. Uh, do you think he's someone that would need to come back or do you think he's good to go? Well, it just depends on the injury. Uh, again, I like staying out of that. I, mm-hmm. I want all these guys to go back to school. They don't need uh, college, college coaches don't need someone like me trying to say guys don't need to go back to school, but uh, no, Brant's done a lot there. He's been a really productive player. Uh, we were at the week one game in the swamp uh, and saw those guys. And obviously he had a, of the two tight ends, he had the bigger game that day. Um, but he's a guy because of size, you know, he's more of an H back fullback. I mean, we, if he were healthy, we thought about bringing him here as one of our fullbacks, which we've done over the years with guys that are like six, two ish, six, one and a half type full, uh, tight ends. Um, so he, and those guys have a lot of those guys like Josiah DeGuar, uh, Josiah DeGuar from the Cincinnati got picked in the third round a couple years ago by green Bay and, and, uh, Trayvon Wesco from West Virginia a couple years ago, got picked by the jets in the fourth round. So we've had. Uh, a lot of success doing that with guys. And that's kind of what we thought about Brent, you know, uh, Brent really, really savvy guy can get open, has separation quickness, catches the heck out of the ball. So um, yeah, I just hope he comes back uh, good off that injury. What is it about guys like him? that are kind of that tweener size that are so difficult to match up with in the NFL. Well, that's the thing. If they're going to be tweeners and they're not going to have that size to play on the line of scrimmage, they're going to have to, they're going to have to make plays um, in the passing game and they're going to have to contribute on special teams, which, so you're looking at a, that you have to have a certain level of, of athleticism to be that guy. And Brand obviously has that, um, but they just have a knack. They know how to get open versus man and zone, uh, which we've seen him do over the course of time. He's obviously a smart guy. They move him around so he can handle a lot of volume in a playbook, which those guys have to do. I think tight ends just, they have to be some of the smartest guys on your roster um, just because they're used in so many different ways. So uh, yeah, he's definitely been a mismatch guy for them. And then of course, there's also Dalton Kincaid uh, who had a monster game on Saturday. Uh, talk to me about Dalton Kincaid. 
Uh, yeah, just was ripping through the game before we jumped on here. To uh, yeah, I was actually listening to this game driving home from Florida State Clemson, um, and it was uh, it was a really fun game just to even listen to on the radio. Uh, we got the youth broadcast on Sirius XM, and uh, going back over the game, Dalton kind of showed exactly like his full uh, like his broad skill set. You know, he's he's a guy that I think we all, you know, youth fans know his background being a USD transfer guy. And, and that's a, that's a non scholarship. The pioneer conference is a non scholarship conference. I don't know if a lot of people realize that. So obviously a guy that was under recruited out of high school. Um, so I kind of love stories like that. I love guys like this that develop, develop themselves into great players, but I think you saw everything you say as a receiver, you saw him uh, work underneath and get himself open in tempo routes. Um, he was the outlet guy for Cam Rising, which I think speaks to what Cam Rising, um, you know, his level of, of quarterback play. And a lot of college quarterbacks can't use checkdowns really effectively. And and Cam did that time and time again the other night uh, to Dalton. And then we saw him get down the seam. There was there was a couple of plays. There was that play late in the first half uh, where he got down the seam and made a really you know, high point extension on the ball. And then there's another play down the right sideline on a big play down the field where he was called out of bounds, but uh, made a heck of a play on the ball. It just kind of shows his ball skills. And then, you know, after the catch, just slipping linebackers and, and making plays after the catch. So he really, everything the NFL is going to want to see from a receiving tight end, he showed in that game. And they used him as the puller. They got him up in the hole and he was, he was uh, isoing on linebackers and doing a good job doing that. So, um, you know, he's, he's really uh, one of the better combo tight ends in this year's draft. I, I think what makes him so interesting is he kind of can play like a receiver, but he has the size of your typical tight end. I mean, that tiptoe on, on the line where he was initially called out of bounds was incredible for someone of his size. How, oh, how often did they call that inbounds on that play? They did not call it inbounds originally. Uh, they had to go back and reverse it. They said he was out. But did they reverse it? They did reverse it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Dude, that yeah. was an incredible catch. That was an incredible. I just saw him rule it out of bounds. So anyway, sorry to cut you off. But that oh, was no, a- no. I mean, how often do you find guys with that kind of size that can play that way? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a fluid athlete. He runs really easy. Um, like I said, he gets down the seam. He can stretch the field. Uh, really natural catcher. Um, that's the other thing. I mean, sometimes with tight ends, you got to you gotta put it right on them. I mean, this guy can go outside his frame, and he's athletic enough to – not just make plays like extending, extending outside his frame, but he can get off the ground and make plays. So, um, you know, he's, he's, he's a, he's a playmaker in the past game and he's got the size to develop as a blocker. He's got the want to develop as a blocker. Not many of these college tight ends come out ready made to, to, you know, play on the line of scrimmage at the next level. Um, but as long as they have the frame and they have the willingness to do it and the toughness to do it, um, that's what NFL tight ends coaches get paid for. So, um yeah he's definitely one of those guys that you know sometimes when you just get a pass catcher out on the field you're really tipping your hat as a play caller um but he's not gonna he's not gonna limit an NFL play caller that way because he will be able to put his hand in the dirt and uh, get people blocked you did bring up Cam Rising uh, and you've actually been pretty high on him compared to other people what is it about Cam that's so special in your mind and why do you think he's maybe so underrated yeah, I, I just like how he plays the position. Like, I mean, I don't know what the word is. If it's moxie, whatever. You know, I just I think he knows how to play quarterback. Uh, just plain and simple, bottom line. He's very competitive. I like that he plays good on big stages and big games. You saw that again the other night. Um, you saw it in the Rose Bowl. Again, part of, part of why I like him is I got a chance to meet him over the summer at the Manning camp, and he just was really impressive, kind of like in an understated way. Uh, you know, he's he, he didn't. You know, like some of those guys down there, you hear them a lot. And I didn't hear Cam a lot, but when I got one on one of them, like there's just something about the guy that that uh, drew me to him. So um, he throws a good ball. He's got a better arm watching him at the Manning camp than I thought maybe he had on tape. Um, so there's a lot to like. There's a lot to like. I just, you know, I really like the makeup of the player. Do you think he has what it takes to be an NFL quarterback? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a. Uh, this year's quarterback class is is, is muddier um, is probably the best way to put it than in, in a lot of years. You know, for our game, um, you know, usually there's four or five guys we know going into the year. Like this year, it's not that way. There's there's maybe a couple. 
Um, and there's a lot of guys being graded like with day three grades right now. I think there's probably, again, I'm looking over the camera right now at our board. There's probably 20 quarterback names right now up there that if you pulled all 32 teams, like there would at least be one or two teams have draftable grades on all 20 guys. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a, you know, what flavor quarterback do you want to play with type of thing. But uh, so it's going to be interesting. You know, there's been a couple guys separate themselves from that group this year. I think I think Hennon Hooker at Tennessee has kind of risen out of that group. I think Bo Nix at Oregon um, has kind of risen out of that group. And uh, but it's going to be they're all packed in. So, you know, big games like that can help him. You know, you get in a big, a big stage game like that and you got to play in critical moments and, and make plays. And he and he did that. So he's, he's certainly helping himself. Let's look at the offensive line, a uh, guy like Braden Daniels. What, what is it about him that's so special and has the potential to do well at the next level? Yeah, I think you look at the athlete. Um, he's a good athlete. And, uh, you know, I think the determination is going to be, is he, a, is he a tackler at the next level? Is he a guard? Um, I think he'll probably start out as a tackle. Um, and teams will try to prove themselves wrong there, make, make them prove them wrong. And, if it doesn't work out, then I think everyone knows he can play guard. Um, but he's got a good body type for to be a, to be a guy that can play inside and outside. And I think he has enough length um, to play out there, but he's got enough mass and substance to play inside as well. So um, I think he's going to start in the league. I think he's going to be an NFL starter, uh, and he's got a, he's got a nice ceiling because of that athleticism. Is there anyone else on that roster that you're maybe looking at that? nobody's really kind of caught on to yet that you've been impressed by? Um, you know, I don't know if there's, you know, looking back over uh, the last few years of having guys in the game. Um, and we've had some Utah guys that kind of fall into that category. I know that, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and now I'm blanking, you're, you're catching me on camera. You're, I'm blanking on the a line. We had a linebacker um, who played really well his senior year and was kind of under radars at this time. Um, and he went to Dallas. It's oh, not Francis Brad Bernard. Yeah. Yeah. Francis Bernard. There you go. Um, I don't know if there's someone like him. I think Tavion Thomas is going to get a good long look. I mean, he's the type of big physical downhill back that most NFL teams are looking for. But but um, I don't know if there's a Francis Bernard in this group. I, I, you kind of mentioned you've you've had Utah players come to the senior bowl in the past. In fact, just a couple years before you invited, I think six, six and four showed up uh, because two of them were injured, which is basically unheard of. Unless you're kind of from the South, you don't necessarily have that many guys from out West come that way. What, what was it about that 2019 team that was so special? Yeah, it was just, it was that whole defense, man. Like we had Bradley and Francis and, you know, a couple of the DBs, um, Again, I think just the competitiveness, they flew around. They really, like I said it that year, like they played like an SEC defense. Um, they really did. I mean, I think there's a different style of brand of football that's played in a lot of different leagues. Uh, but the SEC on defense, they're just faster and more physical than, than the rest of the country. And that Utah defense specifically, there was a bunch of guys on that team that, that, uh, that just were reckless. They were, they were, they were reckless. They ran around and, and threw their bodies around. So that's what kind of stood out. Yeah. We had lucky foe too, I think was that year. And mm -hmm. um, that was a good year. That was a really, that was a really good Utah defense. One person that was overlooked in that class that actually ended up making quite a, quite a little splash and a name for himself is, uh, oh my goodness, Snoop, uh, goodness, Tyler Huntley. Sorry. <laughs> I just lost his name. I blanked his name. Tyler Huntley has been doing really, really well as a backup in Baltimore. Do you think he would have been drafted if they'd actually been able to have a pro day that year? Um, possibly. Um, so I'll say this, like part of our process, um, like we like to do our own work. Like that's mm -hmm. something I, I, I kind of pride our, our, us on is that, you know, there wasn't a football operation in place at the senior bowl before. Um, no all-star games had college tape before we got here five years ago. So I, I do take a lot of pride that we've built a real football operation here. But again, like this year, we have nine, we have nine former NFL scouts working for us with a, over 170 years of experience. So we're doing it the right way, but, um, you know, we don't have all the answers either. And, and this game is for the NFL team. So part of our process, once we get this board built and we feel good about our grades is, 
incorporating, you know, our league contacts. And we've all worked in the league forever. We all know people. So, you know, we, we have this formal call process where we get on the phone with over half the leagues, you know, GM, personnel director level guys, and we just go position by position. And I can tell you that you're the only team that had a draftable grade on Tyler Huntley was the Baltimore Ravens. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's fitting that he ended up with the team that wanted him, that valued him, and that really fit them. I think that that's good drafting. Like you draft players that fit what you do. And he, you know, if, if Tyler would have went to 31 other teams, maybe he would still be in the league. Maybe he would be having the success. Uh, maybe he would, we don't know, but I think he ended up at the perfect spot. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been great. You know, we didn't invite him to the senior bowl that year, because again, if, if 16 of the 17 teams you talk to don't have draftable grades, why would you invite him to the senior bowl? Right. Um, but but I'm, I'm happy for him. I love when guys, I mean, I love when guys prove us wrong. I mean, that's, I mean, I just love seeing players succeed. So um, I'm happy that he went to the right place. I'm happy he's successful. And, and I hope he gets a shot to be a starter because when he's gotten on the field, he, he sure looks like one. I think something that's very interesting uh, is the amount that Utah has been talked about. And a lot of people don't believe me when I say that, these conversations are being had at these higher levels. Uh, But you and I spent a lot of time talking about last year's Utah football team at the senior bowl. Uh, What was it about that team that just was so impressive to people in the most upper levels of college football? And and why were they such a topic of conversation? I just think you got to talk about the culture of what coach Witt has built there. And he's been there. I don't know. You tell me how, I don't know how long he's been He's been at Utah, but it seems like, mm-hmm. you know, years now maybe is, are we getting on 20 years? He, so he has been there since 1994 as an assistant. So he's kind of pushing on 30 years yeah. overall, overall, 18 as a head coach, but about almost 30 overall. I think it's like 29 years he's been there. That's incredible longevity. It really is. Um, you know, it just speaks to the culture and what they've, what they've built. I mean, I think, you know, what you're getting from these Utah teams. I think they, I talked about the NFL teams that are smart. They go out and target players that fit what they do. I think that Utah's done a great job of targeting high school kids that fit their culture. You know, they, they know who they are and they don't really try to go outside of that. Um, And there's just a culture of winning there and, and guys fall in line. So you're getting tough, competitive, um, smart football teams. And I think that's why, you know, as an NFL scout, like there's certain programs you feel like you can get a certain guy from. And that's why there's just a reliability, uh, a dependability factor of the guys coming out of Utah. Cause regardless of whatever the talent level is of that player, like if you project him as a starter or a backup or, or a practice squad player that hopefully you can develop, I think, you know, um, what the makeup of the person's going to be. And I think that that shows up on their tape and that showed up with that football team. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time out to talk about Utah and some of the players that they have both past and present that have come through uh, your guys' doors at the senior bowl. And hopefully there will be a few more this year. Uh, it's looking like maybe, maybe there could be, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll just kind of have to hang in and see. <laughs> yeah. I certainly hope we have, we have some too. Um, and I hope that they, you know, I think what would be really cool is if uh, I know they had the helmets this past week that honored their, their, their fallen brothers. And uh, I think it'd be really cool if one of the Utah guys brought one of those helmets down to, to Mobile this year. I think we, we'd be honored um, to have one of those helmets in our game. Well, I, I know that the Rose Bowl helmet sure caused a lot of buzz last year when that showed up. So, yeah, yeah. that was, that was cool that we had that we had the special special uh, Rose Bowl helmet delivery. That was that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was a crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Actually, before I do let you go, that brings up another talk about a guy like TJ Pledger, because he showed up last minute and he was a guy that actually was able to perform and was probably one of the top performers despite only having 24 ish hours to get ready for that game. Yeah. I mean, we started scouting TJ when he was at Oklahoma um, and liked his Oklahoma stuff. And we got in a situation last year where we needed a back in the middle of the week. We had a couple guys get hurt um, and he answered the bell. And to me, 
Um, I mean, a couple years ago, we had during the COVID year, we had our game during the COVID year, um, and we had a bubble, right? Like we mm -hmm. had to bubble the thing, and we the very last day we needed alignment, and we rushed this guy Jimmy Morrissey over who was training in Pensacola, and he took his COVID test and passed through all the protocols and all that. Um, but he he came in and didn't practice at all. So I love the guys that kind of drop what they're doing. TJ was training last year. I think he was out in California. He hopped on a plane, got out here, like you said, played great in the game, had a really good game. Um, and I hope TJ, um, you know, gets an opportunity to hook on somewhere. It's just right now the running back position is really hard mm -hmm. um, in the NFL. Like it's just for whatever reason, it's getting devalued. And um, it's really one of the one of the more difficult positions to make in the league right now. I think teams are carrying fewer guys. And um, so I hope he makes it. I think, you know, TJ is one of those guys that the NFL is all about, like right place, right time, right opportunity. I think TJ is more than talented enough to play at the next level. He just needs to he needs to get that right opportunity where he can get somewhere and get his, you know, get his feet on the ground and, and then show what he can do. So I hope I hope it works out for him because I really appreciated him coming in late and doing such a good job last year. Well, good stuff, Jim. Thank you so much for taking the time and hopefully we can talk again soon. Absolutely. Hit me up anytime, Michelle. All right. Okay, guys, that was executive director of the Senior Bowl, Jim Nagy, giving a breakdown on everything University of Utah, as well as some of the up and coming guys that you might be seeing playing on Sundays. That you've been listening to the Crimson Corner. I am Michelle Bodkin signing off. And as always, go Utes.